Hello, comic book fans. Here's Earl Grey. I recently figured out a new way to sort my comics. Um, on the left-hand side, there are my American comics. And uh, in the middle section as well. Uh, sorted a bit by genre, about horror, there's crime and sci-fi and so on. And... Um, on the left, uh, right hand side, here we have, with a few exceptions over there, um, European comics. I want to concentrate, focus today on European sci fi comics, which I have shelved in over here and over there. So, I'm starting with classic stuff over here. The Shipwrecked Ones in Time, or Shipwrecked in Time, however you want to uh, translate Die Schiffbrüchigen der Zeit, that's the German title. Um, originally, it was a French comic, of course, drawn by Paul Guillon and written by Jean-Claude Forrest. The same guy that drew Barbarella, uh, that, yeah, uh, that was written and drawn by Barbarella. This one is just written by him, but uh, it clearly uh, is in the same vein as Barbarella. A bit more serious sci-fi, but uh, you recognize it uh, immediately as a child of the... 60s or 70s. These are soft covers, but very nice one, and uh, European oversized uh, ones. Actually, this is the standard European format as I knew it back when I was a kid. Uh, s there were smaller um, comic books like Mickey Mouse or so. But the usual stuff, as Asterix, Lucky Luke, and so on, these were in this shape and format. So, <clears throat> talking about Barbarella, these books certainly deserve another video too. That's a nice helmet. Huh? And, uh, yeah, it was very provocative, I guess, uh, in the in the 60s, late 60s, when it came out. It has the spirit, uh, the sexploitation um, feel going on, and uh, yeah, Barbarella, I guess you all somehow know a bit or two about this comic. This is a black, white, black and white version. Like I said, topic for another video. Mm. A uh, bit in more of the same. Nah, it's um, it's a bit similar to Barbarella. Maybe comparable, so that it's justified to stand uh, next to Barbarella. But doesn't have to say that it's uh, worse than Barbarella. Just uh, the opposite. It's a fantastic book, The Adventures of Jodel by Guy Pellier and Pierre Bartier. Fantastic book with uh, pop art, sci-fi stuff done by Fantagraphics. So, uh, and I guess uh, Guy Pellier is a Belgian guy. So. Going on with French comic artists, um, Casa is a guy, no, no picture of him here, uh, who did stuff, I guess, for heavy metal, uh, certainly in this vein of uh, the old heavy metal magazines. I guess this is was the cover for uh, 
Heavy Metal Magazine. These are collections of short stories, um, a bit in the satirical vein, um, mostly of them uh, full of social and political comments with a heavy injection of drug and psychedelia feel and uh, a certain dose of science fiction too. So it's justified to put them into this um, connection to these other comics. Yeah, and these stuff here obviously are my Storm comics. I did a longer video some months ago, uh, ago uh, about my older Storm comic books. These are my upgrades. Uh, these are hardcovers, very fine books, I must say. Um, printing wise and, and uh, how the colors pop and so on. They are pretty fantastic. And even the newer Storm books that came out after Don Lawrence's death and uh, that are drawn and written by other people are very amazing. Yeah, like I say, said, I will do a video about these fine books here. I guess this is the last one, yeah, that Don Lawrence drew by himself and uh, during the work on this book he yeah he bite he he bite he bit the bullet ah he died so um put this back to order let's see so here's a little sci-fi book by william vance x h g c3 i talked about shortly in my William Vance video. One question that is often asked when uh, it comes to European comics is where to start. And the only true answer obviously is with this one, with the Inkal, um, written by Alexandro or Alejandro Jodorowsky, or Jodorowsky, Jodorowsky, and drawn by Möbius. I have this uh, very nice and not very cheap, I must um, say, um, edition in the slipcase. And uh, here it is divided into six parts. I guess that was the original intention uh, to publish it in this 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 form here in this kind uh, in uh, six divided chapters and yeah I uh, certainly will do a video about this uh, there is there are plenty of things to say about the Inkal the Inkal Le Inkal and um, yeah I will do it but but today it's more of this cover showing, showing off, bragging with the stuff I own, man. <laughs> so, but I uh, maybe you get a thing or two out of this overview. Don't know. Sometimes it helps just to know what stuff is around. And this is a prequel before the Inkal. And this is a German hardcover, all-in-one edition. Very nice. Um, to compare it with uh, the original Möbius saga is a bit unfair. But uh, at least art-wise, this prequel and this sequel, the last Inkal, uh, Art-wise, it's not so bad. Yeah, the art is amazing, I think. The story of the last Inkal is mm, not 
as good as the Inca, but which comic is, and it's a worthy um, add-on to the Inca mythos. I remember that I uh, um, took it. It took me a long time to really appreciate the Inca for what it is, because there are some tropes in it. Um, about es so esoteric stuff like flying pyramids and so stuff I really don't appreciate usually but you have to see this as a plot device here and then it makes all sense uh, there's magic going on and you have to accept it and if you do this then everything's fine so oversized even more oversized than this stuff here Atzak book, a little, uh, a bit lit, smaller one, uh, and, and older one, soft cover. The Die Hermetische Garage, um, oh, was the English title? The Hermetic Garage, the, uh, the, air the Airtight Garage, I believe. And this is a smaller edition of a fantastic, one of my uh, favorite comics of all time. And the Star Wanderers, an old deluxe edition. I, I treated myself when, back, way back then when I really didn't have the money to do so. Was quite expensive, but yeah. A book with art by Möbius, and here we come to um, the more of the oh, how do you call it um, spin-offs <laughs> of the Inkal. Um, Especially the person of the Meta Baron. That's, Meta Barons are, uh, are people who have a long heritage, and these books here, Kastaka and the Meta Barons, and so, uh, delve deep into the legacy, into the history of uh, the Meta Baron that you come to know and like or dislike from the Inkal. Kastaka I didn't enjoy it as much as the other Meta Baron books because it otherwise it's uh, splendid. It written uh, of course by uh, Jodorowsky and drawn by Das Pastoras. Very nice art, but story-wise more on the fantasy side, so uh, sword and sorcery and stuff. Uh, crazy, okay, but yeah. I hoped for a bit more science fiction-y stuff, but it fits into the, the epic, of course, uh, because they have these archaic roots, so to speak. Um, so, and the Meta Barons... Uh, these books are so deluxe that it <laughs> maybe it starts to annoy me a bit. It's maybe a bit too much on the shiny, glimmery, glammy side, and sometimes maybe they could do these books a bit cheaper. Um, ah, here, here we have Juan Juan Jimenez Jimenez. Uh, who drew the Metabaron stuff, most of the Meta... Well, I guess all the Metabaron stuff, and here the man, Jodorowsky. Um, yeah. These books, the Metabaron stuff is, for two reasons, fantastic. One for the writing of uh, Jodorowsky, one for the art of Gimenez, who is fantastic uh, in, in the way he drew future technique, future tech. 
if you're not amazed by the first glance at these um, panels, maybe this stuff is not for you. Um, wonderful books. Um, I will showcase them, certainly. But I have planned uh, this uh, to show for such a long time so that I think it's due time to just do an overview of these books. Because they are maybe popular over here, but uh, not so well known overseas. So here, another book in this saga, drawn by Zoran Janjetov, and I guess uh, Fred Beltran was on color duty, the Techno Fathers. I don't know, maybe it's called, it's called the Techno Popes in, in uh, English, in the English version. But you surely will recognize which book this is. And this is maybe, this is such a crazy clean style. Um, it clicked not at first sight for me, but oh, hell yeah. And uh, I, I didn't uh, put uh, markers in the book because you really you can open up any page and your eyes get a feast. Ah. Wonderful science fiction, European science fiction at the best. And here it's the European big cover, uh, big format makes totally sense because um, there's so much detail that you can put on the usual European page that it would be a shame if these pages were um, shrunken to the standard American comic book format. Yeah. Well, still a lot to show you here. Um, so these books, these two books, this is a two-part mini-series. Uh, Your Last Life. It refers to, refers to the last life um, of a video game. And uh, the premise here is what happens if you um, emerge into your computer game so totally that you're literally in it. Crazy story gets a bit out of hand at uh, points and places. Uh, I, I think Gimenez is a great artist, but maybe not always uh, such a good writer. Um, and uh, the story is a bit aged. Uh, I think what was crazy science fiction way back then uh, turned out to be usual gamer stuff today. So, but I'm not so, such a big gamer. Nee, I'm not a gamer at all. So, uh, stuff that Juan Gimenez, Gimenez um, just drew and uh, it's still ongoing and uh, one Richard Malka, Richard Malka, um, wrote, well, is this one, Segments, German title Segmente. Um, looks good, is good, about this future world where um, the planets are the a, a system a planet system is divided into fun planets with different function on there's the segment of work the segment of order the segment of creativity the segment of spirituality and so you have to choose when you want to become a priest you have to uh, change 
move to uh, the segment of spirituality, one part in one day in your life, 18th birth uh, birthday or so. So that's the general premise here. And if this series is uh, continued, I want to showcase this too <laughs> somewhere in 2018 or so. I don't know. So, And this is one part uh, story about Leo Rohr. Leo Rohr is a journalist, a man, uh, but a nice female face is selling better, of course. And uh, yeah, written and drawn by Gimenez. And this stuff is uh, really fine. And even though <laughs> yeah, sometimes Gimenez loses some threads of his plot, uh, it's yeah, as you see it. It has really everything to make a comic fun and worthwhile. So the last Inca, we had this before. Um, ha, a German. <laughs> Krauts Ahoy. Uh, Gung Ho. Um, this is a German comic, black sheep, post-apocalyptic science fiction stuff. Um, Seems to be created a lot with computer aid. So I don't know exactly how to, uh, if, I, if I like it or not, but uh, it's an amazing effort anyway. So about this kids in a Post apocalyptic, post apocalyptic. One time again, kids in a post, kids in a post, kids in a post, kids. Kids in a post apocalyptic world. Oh, not so difficult, man. Okay, and oops, here are the nicest covers. In the world, <laughs> Prophet by Mathieu Lofre. Last ones are written and drawn by him. The first one uh, had a co writer. If you see these covers, you have to buy these books, I guess. The interiors are not so great, although uh, drawn by the same guy who did the cover. Okay, it's, it's nice. The story is a bit between mixed between, let's say, Hellboy and a more generic science fiction tale. So, if you choose, uh, if you expect sensational stuff uh, from the judge judging from the covers you may get a bit disappointed but uh, was worth it anyway so last one uh, is a two-part uh, series siberia 56 or 56 uh, it's ongoing so uh, it there will be more parts than these two books here hardcover Splitter uh, publisher, German publisher, um, about a planet or a planet system far, far away that is, you guess it, very frigging cold. And uh, that's uh, represented in this bluish uh, dimmed color palette. And even though the characters are uh, a bit generic on the first appearance. Uh, the art is quite good. And the story as well. So I enjoyed this uh, very much and I, I'm uh, seeing... I'm looking forward for the next... Um, for the next book, yeah. So, um, 
So here are still some other books that are more or less science fiction. Uh, Philippe Druyer, Nosferatu. Okay, that's more horror book. Huh? Um, but yeah, uh, books from Francois, Francois Coyton and his brother Luc and Benoit Peters and so on. But uh, I have a long series of videos about them that's still ongoing and maybe someday I continue it. Uh, Corte Maltese obviously has nothing to do with science fiction. So, okay, that will be enough for today. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.